Yo, lads and lassies, welcome back to the YouTube. And today, welcome to a completely different type of video. And um, basically, we have two cameras set up. We're going to do a bit of a Q&A, but I'm going to try and do it in like almost a longer form, nearly like a podcast, like where we just kind of go off on tangents and talk about wakeboarding in general, but also just try and leave it as raw and like as uncut as possible because I haven't done a QA and a in literally I'd say nine months so I figured do you know what we'll put it up on Instagram get a few questions and then we'll just roll with it so I don't know what camera I'm going to look at the most I don't even know how long these cameras record for but we'll see how it goes so the first question Ben Mitchell 13 uh, what got you into wakeboarding easy one to start off Basically, my family were into windsurfing and we had like a caravan in the middle of nowhere in Ireland. And then we got a neighbour who had a boat. He thought me had a water ski when I was about four or five. Did that for like five years. Um, and then that same neighbour got a wakeboard. I learned how to do that. It had sandals in it and it was like an adult's wakeboard. And I was 10, I think, at the time. So I learned it with my shoes in the board, which is pretty insane. Um, like shoes in the sandals, if that makes sense. Got the hang of that pretty quick and then just got really addicted and just kept going. Um, so yeah, that's how I got into it. Most people, I think, either go to a cable park for the first time or like a lot of people, their family are involved in it. Like a lot of pro wakeboarders actually, like Parks Bonifay, for example, his parents are like professional, sh professional show skiers. So like loads of people are just involved in the sport before they even start or when they're born even nearly is what I'm trying to say. So yeah, that's how I got into it. Second question from Eli Stash. What do you do during the winter as far as wakeboarding is concerned? So generally during the winter, when I grew up, so from the age of let's say 12 is when I took it like semi-serious to 19, I just dealt with it in the winter. I literally was the most ballsy person ever. Me and a few friends and we just wakeboarded in the ice. Like genuinely i know you're gonna think i'm lying here but we actually would plow through a gap in the water and like break up the ice we only get really thin ice in ireland on the really cold days and we just wakeboard and that is probably the reason i have a bit more of a playful style because in the winter you can't go and learn new tricks you just genuinely go out and play and you do it for fun and for nothing else so when i was younger i just dealt with it but now thankfully since I've been 19 and doing this full time I've had the opportunity to like travel in the winter so usually I try like leave like even now in Ireland it's cold I just flew in from Copenhagen today um, and it's cold in Ireland there's no denying that so wakeboarding is not ideal at this time of year and it's only going to get colder for the next few months and this winter I probably will go away and go to like Australia or Thailand or something but yeah that's as far as that's concerned, but then there's almost the fitness side, which maybe that's what you're getting at. Um, and for the fitness side, the best thing you can do, without a doubt, I've said it loads of times in like videos and stuff, is the trampoline. Like It's so good for fitness, like you're jumping up and down. It's good for the muscles, because you're jumping up and down. And then it's good for aerial awareness, like if you're trying to learn inverts, um, because you're literally flipping and you just, the more you flip, the more you do something, the easier it becomes. It's just like a fact of life. So yeah, that is how I deal with the winter. Um, so let's go into another question. What is the coolest place you've ever visited by wake underscore overstock? Coolest place, I mean my favorite place is Dublin, Ireland. I just absolutely love it here. It's home, but favorite place, some of the coolest places, so like New Zealand, there's a sick place you go away in there. I can't remember the name of the area, but you, there's one particular place on this lake and it's called Paradise and it's, it's genuinely paradise. You wakeboard up to it and the water is no joke like 35, 40 degrees. At points it's too hot. You park up, you have a barbecue, a few beers. It is the dream. Uh, I think that's on the North Island. That is unbelievable. Then I'm trying to think where else. Um, I don't know, like usually I find when I go somewhere, it's not where I am at I'm with. So like I had an um, I've been to Thailand like pretty five times and I've had kind of like bad trips to Thailand where it's been boring and then I've had like one of the best trips I ever went on was two years ago to Thailand. Um, so I think w the people you're with is far more important than like where you actually are as well. Like yeah, yeah, that, I'm not, not, not going to go any more into it. That's enough. Not not that I'm going into it. That sounds weird. But no, like I could name everywhere I go is like my favorite when I'm there, which is just so bad. But uh, yeah, usually most places are pretty good. Um, how did you get sponsored? How did you get your first sponsor, sorry, and who were they? My first sponsor was 
um, Edge Water Sports, who is the O'Brien dealer in Ireland, and technically I'm still sponsored by him. Uh, and it wasn't so much as a sponsorship deal as I was selling, he was based in Northern Ireland and I live in the South of Ireland. So I, he basically said to me, if you sell anything in the South of Ireland for me, you can take 20%. And it was anything from a shop. So I think he had Liquor Force, O'Brien, Joby, uh, like sea skin wetsuits, O'Neill wetsuits. And I sold like, I was 12 at the time. I reckon I sold like probably seven, 800 quid worth of stuff, which is pretty good. I'll take that. And so that was my first kind of sponsor. Uh, and yeah, that was it. First major sponsor was O'Brien though. So I guess both kind of my first sponsor. Um, so then, I don't know. Yeah, actually that's what I want to touch on because we're not just answering questions. How to get sponsored is a question I get asked all the time. Literally, Dave, I feel like I'm pushing my weight wearing, I'm coming on, how do I get sponsored? In this day and age, sponsorship is changing so, so much. So. When I started, you just had to do well in competition. You had to go mingle with the right people, like build networks and just kind of, I don't know, it was it was different. Whereas now, it's completely, in my opinion, you, there's two routes to do it. One is the completely competitive aspect. Look at someone like Harley Clifford and Mike Downey, like all they really do is compete and that's really it. They do Instagram and they do other stuff, but they are like unbelievable wakeboarders, unbelievable competitors. And that's their main kind of how they get their sponsorship, how they keep their sponsors happy because everyone knows Harley Clifford is the best wave warrior in the world. Probably causing controversy there, but that's just, he, he realistically is. Um, whereas the way I've gone is like completely a social media version of it. And back in the day, the, the old social media was like magazines and making videos. So you do a video part or you do a magazine and that would be how you get sponsored or you get your name out there. But now it's even easier because getting into a magazine like 10 years ago was so difficult. But now you have Instagram and that's your magazine. And then you have YouTube, which is like your video platforms. You can put out edits and you can do it every day. Literally film it on an iPhone. Like I film so much of my videos. Often the videos you watch in this channel, I have my good cameras, but I also have an iPhone. And it's not nothing special. It's an iPhone 7. You can get so much done online or on your phone. So nowadays sponsorship is so much more about creating a personality or a person like, you know, showing, putting your personal personality out there, excuse me. And um, that's what I think is probably the best thing you can do. So if you're looking for sponsorship, I'd suggest three things. One is put your personality out there. So like on YouTube, whatever, and it doesn't, you don't have to be the best wakeboarder in the world. And um, I haven't. The second thing is obviously try and have something unique about you with, within your wakeboarding. So if you're doing the same tricks that everyone else your age or at your level is doing, it's going to be hard to stick out. So your wakeboarding kind of has to back up everything else. And then the third thing is when you actually network and when you meet sponsors, let's say at an event like a grassroots event or you email them, make sure to follow it up, like be consistent with it. Send them like a report or an update every month and let them know what you're up to, what you've been doing, what tricks you've learned, where you've been, like all that stuff. It's gonna go a mile for you and like that will stand you out from everyone else. And if any of my sponsors watch this, they know I do this every month except this month and it's currently the 8th, is it today? It's the 8th of October, so I'm eight days late, eight days late on my monthly update. But usually I do it every single month. I'm never even two days late normally. So that makes you stand out, and then it makes their job easier if they're going to try and help you to progress as an athlete. So my advice are those three things. Put yourself out there. Be unique with your riding. Uh, and I hate that one because everyone always says it. And be like interactive with the sponsors once you... Because anyone can get... You can get their email on LinkedIn. Like You can literally get the CEO of Red Bull's email if you need to. Like, it's so easy. So, um, it's possible. The next question, if we keep moving forward, is, oh, I don't know, I'm picking some. Some questions are similar. Uh, are you coming to Australia soon, mainly cables in Penrith? I have no Australia plans as of yet. However, I have spoke to the people I normally go out to, Ty and all them, and hopefully an Australia trip's gonna happen. But right now, I've still got a couple more trips in the next month or two that I'm gonna get done, figure out what my plan is for January, February, because I wanna do Australia. I would love to do New Zealand again, maybe. And I really wanna do like somewhere in Asia. Never been to the Philippines, so maybe the Philippines is on the card. I don't know, we'll have to see. But definitely in the winter, like 
I'm going to travel. However, I do have two more trips this year. So I'm going to Qatar in two weeks. And then after that, I'm going to Turkey to Hypnotics, which looks insane uh, for a week with 34 Irish people. So it's going to be pretty intense. Like basically all the Ballyhas people are going. It's going to be unreal. And then after that, it basically takes you to December. And then in December, I'm staying in Ireland, hanging out with my friends and my family, just literally taking a bit of a break. And then January, I'll probably go away. But nothing's booked. The only trip I have booked for next year is I'm going to go on the ultimate wakeboard road trip in Orlando again in April. That memory card's full. So there you go, because that was the audio. So that's why the audio's just changed. Let me figure this out now. I'll be back. We are back. Sorry about that. Complete amateur. Now, next question, moving forward, because I saw this and it's come in so many times and it's been a question for a while, is are you riding for Red Bull now? Or what is like your relationship with Red Bull? So no, I'm completely not an athlete. I wish and I dream and maybe one day, but I hardly doubt it. Uh, what I am is effectively employed by Red Bull or contracted by Red Bull to be like a TV presenter or a TV host. I don't know what the exact phrase you'd use is. Um, but this year I've done six events I think so I did Munich Mash I did four cliff diving events and then just there like I literally flew in this morning uh, I did an OCR which is obstacle course racing or obstacle course running I should probably know that I think racing and um, because I just did a TV show on it but basically it's actually this really cool sport where they do uh, it's kind of like Tough Mudder but like a more extreme more professional version of it and uh, it's it's pretty impressive stuff like they run the course Four, five times in 24 hours, which is ridiculous. But anyway, that's that's a different thing. But no, unfortunately not. I dream of the day I'm with Red Bull. And don't worry, you will you will know it way in advance. But for now, I am so happy working, just like working with them because it's such a cool production. Cool people too. Um, it is funny. People always ask like, oh, working with Red Bull would be like the dream. And it really is very cool. I have to say like such a fresh opportunity for me as well. I never thought I'd be doing TV hosting and stuff, but Everyone seems so nice. I don't know if you can hear it, but there's a helicopter passing up above. All right, next question is Johnson81. Any tips for a cable park beginner who wants to try hitting their first obstacles? So I'm gonna give you two bits of advice. Number one is get your body, your center of gravity low, but using your knees. So you wanna squat down as low as you can with your knees because the lower you are, the less likely you are to completely eat shit. The other thing of advice I give you is whenever you hit an obstacle, make sure you're flat on your board. So you're not on a heel edge and you're not on a toe edge. That's kind of my main advice. Something small, ideally like a really smaller mellow kicker is the best or else a fun box or something like that. That's my advice there, really. Um, but yeah, you just have to do it. Like sometimes it's so scary. And I saw this question somewhere earlier. It's like, why do you face your fear of trying a new trick? And the reality is like, you just do it. Like, I know it sounds so stupid, but it's mostly a mental game. It's more mental than it is physical for a lot of the time. And what always goes through my head when I'm trying something new is like, I'm cutting in, like even two weeks ago when I tried the double flips, I was cutting in and I was like, oh, I really don't want to do this. Like I don't want to do this. And you're thinking of the consequences and I was literally just like, Oh, it would suck if I went home and I couldn't go to the skate park or oh, it would suck if I can't wait for it in hypnotics next week or, or next month and you're thinking all this stuff but then you're just like oh but I'm gonna try it and then it's like if I don't try it now I'm just gonna be so disappointed and eventually whether it's today tomorrow next week I'm gonna try this and then I just like cut in and try it and where it goes good or bad it's the best way of overcoming the fear um, there are other ways, you know, practicing on a trampoline, into a swimming pool and stuff like that if it's a flip for the first time. But for most of it, you just have to man up and, and do it, which sucks, but it has to be done sometimes. Um, and actually, that's a funny one, like, thinking about it, like, I'm so scared of a double flip, and it's not even that hard. Like, a double flip is like, if you think about trampolining, you would learn that far before learning like a backflip 720 or anything like that, which is like a whirly dick, let's say, which I can do. But the double flip just petrifies me. And even now, like still laughing with like the triple flip nearly weight or off the double up. Max and Van Helfer basically did it. Uh, what's the guy? I should really know. I'm so bad at names on the spot. Um, Cody Hess did the triple. He's done it twice now, um, which is a whole different kettle of fish because... Should Cody have won this year? 
for a trick that he won, trick of the year on three years ago. I don't know. There was uh, Tyler, I think, who did the double back mob wake to wake, which, in my opinion, was like way more legit. Not nothing away from Cody because I respect Cody so much. But I thought that double back mob wake to wake is just so technically difficult. Like landing inside wrapped, coming down from a door flip, blows my mind. So he didn't win, and whatever it sucks, but still, like I guess the attempts. The thing about trick of the year that's cool is it gets everyone like pushing themselves like the week before like everyone's going out and trying stuff and whether they win or not I guess it pushes the sport which is sick. Um, I don't know a question's going to come in now after it's in this saying when are you going to do a trick for trick for trick of the year and maybe one day I will but I don't know. I've, ha I've had some stuff like that probably was quality enough but I never put it in to be like nominated because I think you have to self nominate but I could be wrong. I actually don't know how it works. Um, but yeah, do you prefer wakeboarding or, sorry, that was awful reading by me. Do you prefer cable wakeboarding or boat? Uh, I get asked that a lot. I think a lot of people who wakeboard on both do ask, get asked that. I think, personally, being straight up honest, I go in and out of what I prefer. Like one day I prefer the boat, the next day I prefer the cable. Uh, it, it depends how I'm riding. For me, because I'm a lot more competitive on boat, like that's my area of expertise, let's say, I only enjoy, and maybe this is bad, but I only really, really enjoy the boat when I ride well, which isn't as often. Whereas when I go to the cable, no matter what, because I'm not at that same level, I just enjoy it, and I always learn something new at the cable, like something tiny even, just a different press, or something slightly different. Um, so I'd say... I don't know, I get, when I enjoy the boat, I enjoy it more, but I think I probably enjoy the cable more frequently, if that makes any sense. Um, but I think that's just the way people are, like, made. It's like, you we strive off progress, so you're going to naturally go to the thing that you get more progress on. Um, however, if we talk about the sport and where the sport's going, and saying this as a boat rider, I think the sport is going in the, in the direction of cable, system twos, and winching. I don't ever think it'll leave the uh, the boat scene like the boat is still the boat sales in across all brands is up like an insane amount like two hundred percent or something and a lot of that's thanks to wake surfing but also like wakeboarding in the boat is growing but then cables are so much faster and it's so much more accessible and so much cheaper you don't need a lot of money you can just rock up and spend like 30 40 euros depending on where you, where you live so boat is probably not going to grow as fast as cable but I think they're both going to grow. Um, but I think ultimately in the future, if we ever get into the Olympics or into like a full on X Games again, um, it'll be cable in my opinion. System 2 probably and I reckon long System 2, so like double the length of your average System 2. I don't know that for a fact, but that would be my guesses. Um, let's see, Tutu, -tu. again, where's your favourite places? Get a boat in the world, do 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 do. Uh, car questions M4 GTS or C63 Black Edition I'm going to go with Black Edition C63 uh, but I would take either car stuff is another thing but I'll talk about that in like a whole set I, I don't know sometimes I wonder should I include more car stuff I'm mad into my cars like massively if you follow me for a while you probably know that I'm always buying and selling them but I don't know I never really include it on the YouTube because I feel like what happens with this YouTube and maybe this video is interesting to people and maybe it's not but a lot of the time, if I post anything that's not wakeboarding, like, the views are just not as good, the engagement, like, I don't get the same level of stoke, whereas when I do, like, some sort of wakeboard challenge or a tutorial, everyone's so pumped on it and people actually get something from it, whereas if I just do, like, a vlog of my life, if I go, like, mountain biking or at a skate park or talk about cars or, like, if I'm working on cars, people don't really care as much, so I sometimes think, like, okay, stick to wakeboarding. Uh, but it's something I go in and out on my head all the time, thinking, like, what should I do with the channel? But I think I'm just going to stick it to wakeboarding because that's what people like and that's what I like. And then, yeah, I don't know. A few other plans there as well, but we'll talk about that on another day. Um, what else would we say? What age you start? All the questions are quite similar. I think, think we need to get more creative as a bunch. Here's a good one. Uh, from Hard Rocking Hobbit. I'd rather do a front roll over a backflip any day. Am I weird? Um, no, not at all. So honestly, you're probably the normality, actually. 
everyone's so scared of flipping backwards. Like I can tell you right now, flipping backwards is so much easier, but it's so much more scary. Like I was the exact same. I actually didn't learn a tantrum until I could do like heel fives on the boat, which is very unusual. Um, but flipping backwards is so scary. And my advice would be to go to like a trampoline place that has a harness and a proper teacher and learn how to backflip. Because then when you go on a wakeboard, it's gonna be 10 times easier. Like the easiest invert is without a doubt a tantrum if we're going on the boat. Uh, but actually throwing it is the scariest part about it, like 100%. So my advice would be, uh, yeah, to just go do that. Talking absolute crap, completely lost my train of thought. I'm so bad, that's why I never do long videos like this uncut. But anyway, yeah, tantrum's easier, but it's, it's just scarier in summary. Snowboarding, question mark. Yes, uh, that is something I basically never done in my whole life. I have done it, like I'm not gonna lie, but very, very long time ago, and then I did it once in Dubai on the indoor slope. But snowboarding, I went this winter, and oh my goodness, I loved it. Like I had to leave after five days, and I was devastated. So this winter, I'm gonna at least go on one snowboard trip, probably February. Uh, I don't know where yet. Last year, I went to Val d'Isere in France, which was sensational. Um, but I was probably on more of like, I think there's two types of ski trips when you become someone in your mid 20s. There's like a drinking trip where you do a bit of skiing or snowboarding, and then there's like a snowboard trip where you do like, you have a pint or whatever afterwards. And I accidentally, I mean it was fun, but I accidentally went on a, on a drinking trip with a bit of snowboarding. So like the whole time I just wanted to go snowboarding, but everyone just wanted to party. And I like to party as much as the next guy, but the first day I got on those slopes, I just fell in love with snowboarding. I was like, man, this is so sick. And all I wanted to do was go to the snow park, but we were too busy boozing to really get the most out of it, which frustrates me. But now I know moving forward to go snowboarding uh, with some people who are motivated to snowboard or snow ski. But also actually one big thing I noticed is it's really important to have people who can snowboard at the same level as you, because if, you go with a load of beginners and you're kind of good, then you're just gonna be held back the whole time or on your own. So if you can find people who are the same level as you, it definitely, definitely helped. It helped me so much. I had one of my friends, Darren, with me, and uh, we were going off together and it was so good. I'm so, if he hadn't come, I probably would've been quite lost and bored. Um, but yeah, snowboarding is sick and I will definitely be going. Um, what else? The questions are so similar, guys. So annoying. Are you scared was being on a plane? No, but that's actually crazy because if you think about it, you're like 30,000 feet up, I've no idea if that's the height. Um, you should be real scared. You're just relying on some random guy you've never met to fly the plane for you. And it doesn't even make sense that you stay in the air. But I have absolutely no fear. I'm so relaxed. In fact, I sleep best out of everywhere in the whole world on an airplane in an economy seat. I fly economy, like all, like never fly business. And I sleep like a baby every time. Like most, like even if I fly from Ireland to London, from Dublin to London, which is a 45 minute flight, I'm not even conscious from start to landing. Like I wake up on the bounce always, every time. Um, so yeah, I don't know, I, I love flying. Like I, I hate flying. Like I've done 67 flights this year and I don't like, I wish I could just be in places. But at the same time, the travel, like don't get scared. I just relax so good. Cause you've no wifi on most flights. So you're just stuck and you can't do anything but just chill and sleep. Um, right, we're gonna do one more because I don't know if this is good or not. I, like this could be a terrible, um, I'm just thinking like if you were to listen to it as a podcast, it's probably so bad. It would be cool to do. I've thought about it a lot of time, like doing podcasts, like interviewing other pro riders and stuff. I guess the only thing that holds me back is I live in Ireland. But when I'm like with some of the guys, like I go to Orlando all the time to actually interview some of the other riders and like, I don't know, maybe go past what you see because I feel like other than me, there's not that many or any wakeboarders who really put their personality out there. Don't talk to the followers the same way. And I think a lot of people would love to get past the, the interview that's at the end of the contest. Yeah, the event was good. The conditions were good. The wake was good. Everyone rode so sick. I think people would love to like hear what the athletes actually have to say for themselves. Like, does Harley Clifford love wakeboarding? Does Steel Lafferty get scared when trying a triple flip? Like things like that, I think people would enjoy that um, a lot. And so maybe that's something I could do as well when I'm back over in the States in the new year. But yeah, so um, that's kind of it really. I don't know, I didn't really have any plan with this video. The honest, dead honest truth about this video is I haven't made a video in ages. I haven't been wakeboarding that much lately because I've been so busy with life. 
and I know you think I just live a whole day, but sometimes I actually do stuff. And uh, so I haven't had a chance to wakeboard, so I haven't had a chance to film. It's been a little bit, and the YouTube's been slacking a little bit lately, I'm not gonna lie. So I said I'd do a little video like this, see how people like it, can easily do more. Um, but yeah, that's it for now. Sorry for the long video. If you liked it, let me know. If you hate it and never wanna see anything like this, and just wanna see challenges and tutorials, then do be honest. Honest criticism is constructive criticism is so appreciated. Um, don't worry, I'm not. I'm not a pussy. I can take it. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for an insane season. I guess a lot of you are wrapping up the season, probably uh, putting away the boats, putting away the wakeboards, cables closing down. So I hope you had a good one. Thank you so much for watching the videos. I hope they helped you during the summer. If you're in the Australia, I'm gonna go to this camera because it's lower in. America, Australia is down under. Uh, if you're in Australia, then the season's starting. Enjoy it. Make the most of it. Uh, don't be afraid to try new tricks. And yeah, that's about it. Thanks so much for watching.